Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I've got my girl Ivy here, of course, the green anaconda. Now, she's been with us since summertime, so it's been quite a while, and she has just been hammering food. I mean, like crazy. And we were surprised that she was only 35 pounds when we first got her, because she seems so dense and so heavy, but she's been eating so much, I really do wonder how much weight she's gained. So I went ahead and I zeroed out a scale, and I'm gonna step on it and see what she's done. I'll be honest with you again. I don't know if she's gained five pounds, 10 pounds. I'd be shocked if she didn't gain at least about 10 pounds because she is definitely heavy. She's been eating like a maniac. So let's just go ahead and see what happens. And the moment of truth. Let's see what she's got. Yep, 45 and a half pounds. So I was right, she gained just over 10 pounds. That's pretty good for about six months. Again, those large meals she's been eating have been really putting some weight on her. She is such an incredible animal. And what we've been doing is giving her kind of a big meal and then waiting and giving her a smaller meal and kind of just alternating things up. I've been going between pigs and rabbits now, so I'm varying the diet up a little bit there too. But I tell you what, she's amazing. And I've been talking about the fact that we're making a huge exhibit for her that's gonna have a big water feature with the waterfall at the new Reptarium expansion. So it's gonna be really cool to see how she actually acts when she has the ability to swim in the water. Cause a lot of times when you go to aquariums and zoos, the anaconda will spend most of their time in the water. I don't know if that's gonna be the case or not with Ivy. I kind of hope she stays on land a lot so we can go in there and mess with her, but it's gonna be a cool experience. She is definitely getting big. Breeding season is just pumping along down here and the barometric pressure is starting to drop today. It's the first kind of storm that's rolling through. It's actually gonna happen more tomorrow since we started breeding. So I've said this before, usually when your barometric pressure start to drop and you get a low pressure front through, you'll actually see an increased amount of breeding. So it's really important to make sure the right males are in with the right females at the time where barometric pressures drop. Now, I'll be honest with you, this time of year, we don't have enough data to know which female we want the males to be in because we have an ultrasound and everything as a baseline yet, but we know what males have bred and which females need to be bred still. So what we're gonna do is just kind of strategically make sure the right males are in what we think. And then probably next week, we'll do our first baseline ultrasound where every female is ultrasound. That way we know for sure we need to get a male in at a certain time. I've talked about that before. I'll continue to talk about that as the breeding season goes on. But for now, I'm just gonna check with Mary, see if we've seen an increased breeding today. And I assume tomorrow is gonna be a really good breeding day. So do we see breeding today? What's going yes. on with today? Yeah, we had a few locks today. A few locks today. Yep. Now, we're what, two and a half weeks in, something like that mm -hmm. to the breeding season? I mean, you know, what do you think so far? Are we getting going? I know we have young males. Yeah, we do have some young males, but I have seen a few start breeding, so that's okay. really good. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, young males oftentimes just take some time. The good news is, is that our young males are at least a year and a half old. You know, I used to breed five and six month old males, and those guys sometimes wouldn't start breeding until like March or April. I think we're gonna start seeing more and more of these young males switch on and of course pretty soon we may have to start making some decisions yeah. if males aren't breeding like switching them into a different male so we don't have that female start to reverse her follicle growth because like I've mentioned before male copulation causes follicular growth along with feeding and all that other stuff so um so you're a couple weeks in settling in pretty good feel good about it oh yeah i'm really excited i know i can't wait to see it's gonna be so cool for mary to see again ovulations then eggs and stuff like that so it's uh it's it's starting good we got a long way to go uh but hey at least we're underway bruce and jessica were excited about some emerald tree ball poop yeah uh, so they actually shed their teeth and you'll find it in their poop sometimes. So so the emerald tree boa pooped a little bit. So we're gonna just go ahead and take this out and we're gonna do a little uh, poop inspection here to see if there's any teeth in there. Of course, emerald tree boas have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake and really why emerald tree boas and pretty much all tree pythons and stuff like that have such long teeth is obviously they mainly eat birds in the wild they're going to be up in the canopy and when a bird flies by it's going to be pretty important for that animal to grab that bird because if it gets away who knows when the next time another opportunity to eat is going to come that's why they have such long teeth but these guys have amazingly long teeth so let's go ahead check some poos and see if we can find some teeth all right here we go jessica all have right. fun. sort of like dissecting an owl pellet right I don't know. I've never done that either. Really? No. I, <laughs> I think strand. maybe right here we got one. Yeah, it's a small one, but. Oh, it's a small one. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's a tooth right there. It's not a big tooth, but it is a tooth. Our Gaboom Vipers at home, actually, you'll find their 
shed teeth in their poop. So that's, that's what great. actually made us start doing this here. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Animal people are strange. Yeah, we, we're a different breed to say the least, but uh, <laughs> still cool. Their poop's so weird. <laughs> I know, it's just good that uh, she's doing well. This yeah. is that emerald tree bar, remember, that had some issues with di digestion uh, just, you know, four or five months ago, doing really well now, so I'm super excited about that. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another tooth. Oh, oh that's a little bit bigger one. Mm -hmm. Get it off there. Still probably not the huge ones that their front teeth are the biggest teeth, but uh, it's interesting now, again, snakes will shed their teeth and oftentimes they actually poop them out. Snakes will go through thousands of teeth in their lifetime. Uh, it's completely normal for them to shed them and then regrow them. So do they all shed their teeth? Yep, yep, yes? they all okay. shed their teeth. Cool, yep, cool. yep. Even crocodilians shed their teeth, obviously. <laughs> What'd you say? It smells lovely, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smell a vision. <laughs> Lots of mouse hair or rat hair. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think like. I, sometimes I think like, what do normal people think of us? You know what I mean? Like the things that we're like, we're excited, we're all like riveted, like, what's in that poop? Let's find some teeth, you know? Normal people must think we're absolutely insane, right? So we got like half, halfway through it so far. <laughs> halfway through the poop, and we got two teeth. There's literal evidence of, on literally every single one of us. There's a picture somewhere of yeah. us with poop in our hands. Yeah, 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 excited about so it. Happy. Excited about poop. <laughs> Hey, it means they're healthy, right? They're yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah, exactly. And that's good, good stuff. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe we do this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think this was going to be your job, Jay? I, no, but I hoped and prayed it would. Yeah, well, <laughs> what more could you wish for yeah, in life? Dude, yeah, that's it, man. It's like a bone fragment. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow, it is a bone fragment. Yeah. What did we find out of the last one? There's one right there, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. A little one. Look at that eagle eye. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, Let's yeah. go over the fruits of our spoils, as they say. <laughs> Not very much, guys, but it's, it's cool. Let's see, we got... Three little teeth. Three little teeth. We've got, this is the biggest tooth, obviously. And then a couple little teeth, so uh, pretty cool to see just again how snakes can shed their teeth like that. Uh, again, not the biggest teeth for an emerald tree boa, but uh, we'll, we'll keep trying. We'll stick, we'll keep going through that poop just for you guys. Hey, what we got here? Some spotted pythons are breeding. Oh my God, how cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> A super cute little super conda hog nose snake. And uh, the reason I'm showing you this is the other day we did a video where Eric talked about hog nose snakes and uh, something really funny happened. So I want to ask him uh, a question and see what he has to say. Eric. What's up, man? Uh, what do I have here? That is a super conda. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of snake? Hog nose? Hog nose. If I had two of these, what would they be called? Like a pair? What do you mean? No, like, like yeah, if I had two hog nose, what would you call them? Like a, a pair a pair of hogs? A pair of hog nose? What, what do you what do you call plural hog nose? Oh that's it's like deers. You don't say deers, you know, just deer. So you would say You just got hog nose. Really? You don't say like should we rewind the tape? Yeah, I, I think that you called it something else recently. I love the hog noses, the hog noses, hog noses. Hog noses. Did I call it hog noses? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh my and gosh. I was just wondering. I was just wondering not, yeah. I was just wondering if you thought they were hog noses or. No, it's hog nose. Hog it's nose. hog nose. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. I have sure. a friend that's from China, okay? And you usually say Chinese. You don't say Chineses, okay? You know. Can you say that? <laughs> you just did. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. All, right, cool. All right, well, cool. I just wanted to make sure you yeah. did. Right, no, good. Good I'm, job. I'm smart. All right, yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Dude, no worries. You guys know that I keep talking about how excited I am about the podcast. Well, guess what? We have pretty much all our podcast stuff here. Basically, what we have here is a soundboard uh, that can switch all kinds of sounds, effects, stuff like that. We have a video switcher. That way, we can do a live stream video with up to four cameras. We obviously have our mics and stuff like that. We're waiting on our mic stands. That's really the only thing we're waiting on in a couple cores to make this all work. So, with any luck here in the next week or so, we'll have everything we need and we can do our first test podcast. I'm going to put a little link in the description 
description as well as pin a comment. Please help us get over 10,000 subscribers before we get started. That way we can monetize what the plan is, is to do a live stream while we're doing it. That way you can get in chat and all that type of stuff. And then of course we'll upload it afterwards as a video and we'll actually have a second channel called Checking In Clips that will actually break up some clips and stuff like that. That way if you don't want to watch a two hour podcast, you can watch you know an eight or 10 minute segment of each one. So I'll put a link in the description to that channel as well. We need to get that one over 10,000 likes. I really appreciate it. Super exciting. Yes, the through story is going to be animals, but we're also going to have a lot of fun stuff. You know, maybe my buddy Bernsey from the San Jose Sharks when he's in town. Again, like I said, maybe if Carrie from Slayer's in town, you know, stuff like that. So we may be talking about animals, but we'll also be talking about a lot of other stuff that interests me and hopefully will interest you. So checking in podcast is right around the corner. Going to get rolling right after the first of the year. Just heard that our first Antares here were locked up. Of course, that'd be Children's Spotted and Stimson's Pythons. Really cool little pythons. I produced a bunch of them last year. We had a really good year. So it's exciting to get into them again this year. And the fact that they're breeding now means that babies are on their way. I think the thing about the expansion that has me the most nervous, the first big thing anyways, is that in three days, we start to take this wall out right here. So the fact is we're gonna actually have to take everything off this wall, peel this back. We're gonna punch a hole through here. And uh, that is is kind of pretty permanent, right? I mean, once you start altering a building, uh, there's no turning back. Not that I'm turning back, I'm pretty much too far into this, but uh, this one's got me scared a little bit just because, you know, also when you start to take away structure, you never know what's gonna happen. So three days from now, this wall opens up. We are gonna kind of put the thing back so that it closes back up just until we're actually ready to open up when the actual enclosures come here and so like that. But uh, this one has my heart going a little bit. Hopefully everything goes well. Again, three days from now. Taking a quick break from the normal vlog uh, to do you a little pizza hack. Uh, now, Noah told me about this. Apparently, Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons told him the best way to heat up old pizza. I don't, if put it in your toaster, Let's try this. So apparently you just put it in here like this or something. Not even sure how it goes down. Just push it in there and it's supposed to be the best thing ever. I I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I know it sounds crazy guys, but uh, it, it is. It's like you toast your, your day old pizza. It's got a snap. Uh, this was a pretty good hack. Uh, good job Miguel and Noah. All right, back to the shop. The baby frillies are getting so huge. And what's interesting is about this size, you can start to sex them. And uh, it might take us another month or two before a lot of them are completely able to be sexed. But this one, finally, you can start to see that this is a male right here. You can see kind of all of that area down here is how you'll tell it's a male. And uh, this is the first one that's actually showing it. A couple of the other ones are almost the same size. So we're gonna start to be able to tell. We have 11 of them. So I think we're gonna wait till they all are sexable to where we know what our sex ratio is with the and then we could decide if we're gonna keep them all and I have a feeling the ones we aren't gonna keep are just gonna go out to the crew or whatever the case is we'll probably keep the majority to be honest with you but it's cool that we at least have one male and uh, we'll find out what else we have in the next month or two looks like Lori didn't take the keep off my banana GHI you guys might remember when I first got this in I was blown away at how beautiful it was and I told Lori I wanted to keep it and she was like you're not gonna keep that so when I marked keep on it, I thought for sure she was gonna erase it and put it on the website but turns out that it looks like we're actually gonna be able to keep this little monkey giving you guys kind of the overview of what's going to change here at this reptarium as we open up next door. Of course, Butterscotch is way up here. She's going to go next door because she's going to be in a little bit more accessible cage, if that makes any sense. Of course, Ivy, my green anaconda, is going to get the really large anaconda exhibit over there, which is going to be amazingly cool, which means we have two exhibits over here that are going to be open. Then we have Santana, the Savannah Modeler, is getting big. It's actually going to go in Chicken Strip over here's habitat, and then Chicken Strip is going to go into a larger habitat that's more the size of Purdue cage then we're actually gonna have you know certainly fear day is gonna have to go up at some point she's probably good for the very moment now then we have Diddy and Dixie Kong the rhino iguanas are going in that big 12-foot cage that's gonna be right in the window we've got of course salt and pepper getting their new exhibit so these are gonna be open to seven other aquatic things not sure if I'm gonna do turtles in here or I'm gonna do something else not hundred percent sure there and then lastly we're gonna have night fury obviously is gonna need a larger exhibit as well so he's gonna go into a bigger exhibit so as you can see 
there's going to be a bunch of stuff that's getting moved next door and then there's going to be a bunch of exhibits that are open here to put new stuff in we have some stuff at bhb that's going to move over but we're going to definitely be looking for other things too so uh exciting you know but there's a lot of moving parts to try to figure it out and uh, a lot to think about if you like this video can you do me a favor and go ahead and click on this video right here you can watch an entire feeding playlist if that's what you so choose over here you can hit that subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you don't mind have an absolutely wonderful day be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you guys tomorrow